Good morning. Good cup of Joe. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Cutest kids in America, ready for adventure! We are here to the first part of our journey. We got a truckload of adventure here. Pretty much, I guess, the regular truckload we usually have. We are at stop number one on this adventure. We're headed out into the mud. I gotta put my boots on. Gotta put my big boy boots on. We're gonna go get our first ingredient for this amazing meal we're gonna be making on this episode. So, another whirlwind fall adventure. Let's do it. Make this on the bucket. Do it right. Let's go do it right. Hi ho. Hi ho. To dig the clams we go with a big fat rake and a big buck buck bucket. Uh, that was a shitty song. Out to the tasty grounds. Okay, we've made it to the mud bog, and Brooke's doing her favorite thing in the world, playing in the dirt. She's still a little kid, aren't we all? Huh, baby? Yes. Yeah, it's still a little kid. But here's what we're doing. We're digging through the mucky muck, digging out the tasty parts and putting them in the bucket. So this is what the clam sees right here. Big, scary Bigfoot man taking him from his home. But it's okay, we're gonna put him to good use. Let's dig some clams. So what I like to do is I like to kind of dig off the bottom of, the, there's a little clay layer underneath the gravel and you kind of brush it up, run the water over so it kind of cleans it a little bit and then bam, bam, there's your clam. But these are my favorite. Some people call them butter clams, we call them steamer clams. Uh, but these are, in my opinion, some of the best little clams in the world. Absolutely delicious. And I'm not gonna give away what we're making. It's going in a big pot. So I'm guessing you guys can, can probably take a couple of guesses as to what we're gonna be making tonight. But uh, it's gonna be delicious. We got a lot of work to do before we do this. We're eating only what we forage and it's gonna turn into a very, very tasty forage. What do you think, honey? It's gonna taste really good. It's I'm gonna really taste excited. really good. I've been craving this for a few days now, so you know if I'm craving it, we gotta have it. We found a little friend. Hello, Krabby. Krabby. Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krab. We were just talking about the secret formula. Hello. Hello, friend. He's gonna get me! <sighs> Release him. Yes, oh, he's, he's going away. He's going <laughs> away. There he goes. Okay, back to clamming. Now oh, that's a haul. Look at all them clams there. It's like playing the lottery out here, I swear. You just rake away. Oh, look how big this one is. You just follow your elbows. Make sure you have a tingle in it before you dig, and bam. Clams. Wow, that's a hog. Hanging on the wall. Oh, look at them all. Look at them all up here. This is fun. Look at them all. Yes. Fun. Tasty. Scrumptious. Is it scrumptious? Okay. Got a limit of clams. There is a limit on these things, but if you guys live in the Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of places. Oregon, Washington, California, you can dig these. I think California. I don't know. Talking out of my butt there. Uh, but we got a limit of clams. On to the next adventure. The dogs are in the truck, probably freaking out right now. We made it out without getting too muddy. Try to take a thumbnail out there. Anyways, clams. Yes. Any clam connoisseurs? First job should be washing the clam before ingestion. Get it right. Got some nice, clean, fresh, salty clam. Nice washed clam. My favorite. What do you think, bug? Oh, we're gonna spot. Looks pretty spotty to me. Boy, it's dark. Hello, there I am. Hey, this road sucks. We're in the woods. We're looking for mushrooms. 
We just found a boner spot. Ooh. What? Boner spot. <laughs> You're gonna say that? I'm saying that. I said it, everybody. You're, the B you word. It? You're sticking beside it? Yeah. To, for all you children out there, it means a really nice spot. Really nice spot for picking mushrooms. I'm gonna find a spot to park. We might be in somebody's driveway. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, it looks wet out there. It looks very wet out there. Uh, it's so ferny and wet though. It's okay, they still... Well, just the other day, everybody, we were out picking off camera because we do have a life off of camera. And uh, we found most of our mushrooms from the road. And it's something I was telling Brooke, I was like, man, I usually don't stop to look for mushrooms until I see some from the road. So maybe considering it's so wet outside and we're gonna still have a bunch of things to do outside here today after we're done doing this. Uh, maybe let's find a little drier spot or find one from the road. What do you guys think? Okay, got my reused bag. Let's see what this one says. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Nature, for providing us with a delicious meal. Got my little mushroom knife. But the mushroom knife that I've been using lately, and having a mushroom knife is very important, um, is one I'd like to use is these little Dexter serrated deck knives. They're pretty sweet. They don't really ever need to be sharp, and that's the nice part of it. Um, and it's good to always cut your mushrooms, so I'll show you guys, hopefully, a lot of that here in a second. Our goal is to find a bunch of mushrooms so that we can, one, use it for our recipe, but two, Brooke's gonna pickle some mushrooms in this video if we do find some, so wish us luck. It's freaking pouring out there. Fall is here. Okay. Come on, little. Run, run, run! Cross the road! Cross the road like a chicken! Ooh, this is per, per, perfect. Yeah. Oh, dropped you guys. Sorry. Oh my, look at the size of these stumps. What the hell? One oh, looks like an old man's face. Holy moly, babe, come stand by it so people get the scale. You can't really tell until a human's standing next to it. Jesus, Louise. Talk about trees. That's like redwood status. And it's gone. Oh, it's just little babies. Ain't that a portrait for you? Really, really big cedar tree. Crazy how all that's gone. Sad. We're in Washington State and it's, it's uh, one of the most overly logged. Ooh, I think we already found chanterelles. I think it has to be one of the most overly logged places in the world. But you know what? That's, that's what happens. That's development. That's the way the world works. But man, it's hard to find big trees like that anymore. We're still standing. But we'll do our best to find them for you guys. Okay, let's put our nose to the ground. Start looking for mushies. So when you look for a mushroom spot, this is pretty much exactly it. We got really solid, uh, not too like, broken apart of a forest floor. We got old growth stumps and logs that have been cut down and still have a lot of nutrients. They're still dumping a lot of their nutrients out of them. That's what the, the mycelium grows out of is the rotting and dead wood. Um, and that's what makes the mushrooms grow is a, is a little compound called mycelium. So we have to find those little breaks in the mycelium that reach the surface and pop out little mushrooms. Wow, look at that old cedar over there. Wow, just another one too. This one's still standing. It's probably already broken off, but still stood the test of time out here in the woods all by itself. Look at that thing. What a cool spot. Again, from what I'm seeing, this is all, this is a big red cedar patch. All these stumps are old red cedars, which is a very iconic and very important part of the native culture all along the coastline. It's what they, they traveled with. This is what they used to transport people and goods and, and live their ways of life. It's trees like that. They cut down and haul out a big canoe out of them. I have a good feeling that being around these special trees is going to bring us some special luck. And we're going to find some mushies here any second. Let's look how good that looks. Should be some right there, right over here, over there, wherever Brooks at. Sometimes we just need a little luck. Okay, I made it all the way back almost to the truck. And uh, found our first mushy. Kinda gross. Not quite sure what it is does look and smell edible, but it's not cl even close to what we were looking for. So I guess similar. This is not a chanterelle mushroom. We're really looking for chanterelles. That one's got a lot of worms in it too. Ew. Okay. Continue looking. Let's try the old across the road trick. Okay. 
Spot number two. Here we go. Mmm, this is looking real good. This looks a little better even. It's got a little bit more feed for the mushrooms. More of these younger trees falling over. They like to grow in between and are all intertwined in the sticks usually. So this could be a good spot. The girl found something. The girl found something. Oh, it looks fresh. It looks fresh. Ooh, it's all jiggly. I can see it from here. It's got that perfect little wiggle to it. A little wiggle to it. Nice. Not rotted. Not bad. Cool mushy. Smile, babe. We got it. That's, me. That's really pretty. Oh, no, I don't have the bag anymore. Dropped it. No, I didn't drop it. It's in the truck. Guess well, you're gonna have to carry him yourself. Someone's gonna sacrifice the hat. All right. <laughs> Look at that. That is so pretty with the dew on it. The little droplets. That is gorgeous. This one's like super textured on the edge. Neat. Where'd he go? Okay, back to the thirst for chanterelles. Quite the elk trail here. Look at this. Just freaking got a path cut through the woods. I do like to follow game trails a lot of the time when I'm looking for mushrooms. It definitely can lead you in the right direction. Plus, it's the easiest route that you can take through the woods. Um, they're pretty good at figuring out the right ways to go, being out here all the time, if you know what I'm saying. So, oh, man, this is so perfect. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on, kids. Spot number three. Let's see what we can find. I've actually picked mushrooms here before. I found them here before, so I got a little more confidence going in this one. Let's go see what's in there. What'd you say? More chick chicken. And then the rest is here, but that's so much good meat right there, but it's been cut already. Look at the tip, like on the edge. All of these. Mm, how lame. Dang it. Well, this spot's been forged. I don't know. Let's do a little loop through here. I found them in here before, but I can see their footprints. Right through here. Right here. Just about everywhere I stepped. Okay. One big circle back to the truck. I'm gonna have to find a new spot. Okay, lots of bleach. These are actually in pretty darn good shape. Let me see. Yeah. Well, these might be slippery jacks. I think that's what they are. These are slippery jack mushrooms. These are edible, but not really what I'm into. They don't have quite the, the wholesome flavor that uh, a chanterelle or something has, so I'm gonna leave them. Keep looking. Dripping like that. Yep, it's wet. Ew, my soggy wet hat. It's wet out there. Mushroom picking ain't too good. This spot definitely got slammed by a crew, if you will. So we're gonna have to be a little more sneaky on where we find spots now. So let's keep searching. We got quite a while till our third activity of the evening. We're actually gonna be doing that in the dark. So a little little cliffhanger for you guys there. It's gonna be a cool night. So I haven't done this in a long time. But we gotta find some mushrooms. We got some chickens. We need some chanterelles. It'll really top off the day, but it's been a good day so far anyways. Let's get moving. Okay, we came up onto a mountain here. Came up onto the top of the mountain, trying to look for a little more elevation. Um, trying to get a little bit further away from the coast. Uh, Cause I usually, we'll see this happen this time of year. When the mushrooms really start to grow, I mean, we get our first big rains like we're getting today. Because what will happen sometimes as the mushrooms start in the season, they'll start at a higher elevation and then they'll move their way down low. So we almost kind of want to find the freezing line. Like we're just getting down to the low 30s and stuff at night. Not quite freezing because that'll ruin them, but something just a little bit colder. So we're going to have to go up in elevation for that. So, but goodness gracious, this place looks amazing. We gotta find some mushrooms. Ah, but look at how trippy this place is. Reminds me of one of those like European horror movies where all the trees are planted in rows. The trees got them. It was the row of trees. Cool place. 
Definitely one of the best spots we've stopped so far. About another thousand foot in elevation up from where we just were. Just gonna keep working up, working up, working up, working up until we run out of time. But there's lots of mushrooms, they're just not the kind we want. This is a good sign, a good sign. You better check though sometimes. Nope, not what we're looking for. So that one could fake you out pretty good. It looks quite a bit like a chanterelle, but it's not, it has gills. No gills. Only the fish are allowed to have gills. Nope. I'll tell you what though, it's solid mushrooms through here. More, 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 more. Nope. Any second now, any second now, we're gonna step on them. Stop believe. Okay, broke found a king bleat. Very pretty one. And it's in really good shape. Okay, that's beautiful. That's one I think we should take. Honestly, one that I've never eaten, so this is gonna be a, a testament, you guys, to following the book, following your gut, definitely following your nose. Let's cut that base off real quick, see how nice it looks. Wonderful, wonderful. Again, the key to picking new mushrooms and wild mushrooms is to just not eat anything that doesn't smell like you wanna eat it. That smells like I wanna eat it. Let's put it in the bag. Ooh, another really, really nice bolete. You wouldn't have believed it if I told you. But look at that one. That is pretty. What a marvelous looking mushroom. Wow. So cool. Oh my goodness. Oh my. That is pretty. Yes, yes, yes. That is pretty. That's a good mushroom. Look at the stump on that thing. Just an absolutely marvelous one though. That is beautiful. Wow. Oh, that one's growing interestingly. It's oh, wow. Cool. Pretty thick. They smell me, really wanna, good. They smell really good. These smell things delicious. are these are going to be delicious, you guys. Look at those. And they're such unique, pretty mushrooms. Maybe we weren't supposed to find chanterelles. I, I guess that might be that might be it. Because chanterelles are usually our, our easiest ones we find. And uh, this, this week on Stay Fishy has not been. Wow, look at that. Look how pretty that cuts out. Oh, that's so unique. Yeah, it looks interesting. It smells amazing. Mm, wow. And the bags they go. All right, well, let's keep finding those. What do you say? Let's do it. Okay, I'm over it. We just hiked out of the bog. And it's too wet. We're stoked. But we got chicken in the woods. We got our King Belitis. This was a fresh hat too. I just put a new hat on. Gonna have to dry up a little bit. Head off to our next adventure. Hit the stop and make a purchase before we do this though. So, so back to the truck, change of clothes, off to the next adventure. Okay, our whole meal is coming from Mother Nature, but we must purchase one thing while we're here in this place. It's probably older than Grandpa's fishing socks. <laughs> Anyways, we need one more thing for what we want to do. Wrong way again. I saw the light. I see the light. We need a tool to dig these. Well, I'm kind of giving it away. We need a tool to dig these clams that we're going to go get right now. It's a special tool that I forgot at home because I didn't know if there was going to be a clam tie. There's only specific tides throughout the year that you can clam. Um, oh, it's a nice knife getting distracted um, but there's only certain days of the year that you can actually come down here and clam and so i of course forgot my stuff at home but good thing we came to a place that has plenty more of them or just pvc a little hole in the top and then you go and it comes out there go. all right that's all we needed we're looking good let's hit the beach the scene is set the witching hour is upon us it's actually a nighttime tide tonight, so we actually have to dig these things in the dark. I've got Brooke and I some cool headlamps. She's not very impressed with hers. Got a cool headlamp. They just look super geeky. They're Whatever. really geeky headlamps. It was a gift and she wasn't very nice about it. <laughs> um, but anyways, we're on the beach. We gotta go dig clams. We have to wait for the tide to go out. Hi, friend. Oh, hi, friend. Oh, hello, friend. Oh, oh you don't like digging clams. Oh, he gotcha. Oh, wet dog. But we need the rest of the recipe. 
We do have a full day tomorrow. We'll probably cook a little bit of these clams to eat tonight because, again, we're planning on, on only eating what we catch and what we harvest. Then we're going to make a gourmet meal out of it. We're going to add some ingredients, obviously, just to make it perfect. But we might fry up some clams on the tailgate tonight after dark. Uh, but we got to wait till about 8, 7, 30, 8 o'clock. It's 5.30 right now. Look, we're actually parked in the ocean. Believe it or not. Uh, but we have to wait for that tide to go minus. So it's going to be around 0, around 8 o'clock. Then we'll be able to really start finding some clams, but we'll hop out of the truck here and look. Well, we have a little bit of a daylight, but we got flashlights, we got headlamps, we got the big stick, and we got all the will and want in the world for the rest of this awesome meal. So let's go do it. Okay, we're gonna go check it out. It's not time yet, but I'm getting kind of antsy and bored in the car. Sun's just going down, the weather is real nice, let me tell ya. Uh, but we might find some clams. Go looking real quick. Okay, no luck. Almost got nailed by a wave. I thought I had the camera on, but I didn't. Sorry, everyone. <sighs> now we wait. Okay, round two. 7.30 now. It's quite a bit darker out. Um, but the tide is that much more out, too. So, Brooke and I are hopping out. We're geared up. Kind of. Still got blue jeans on, but it'll work. Uh, but I got my big flashlight this time, so it should be a little bit easier to see the clams. My fingers crossed. Let's go find some dinner. Okay, here we go. Two lights into the distance. How about the big light? Boom. Come on, clams, where you at? Where you at, clams? Come on out, you know we're gonna find you. You don't stand a chance, clam. Oh, already got some signs here. Here, take the light, honey. Where'd you go, where'd you go, where'd you go? Over to the right. Right here, there's one. Here's a good one though. Oh, there he was. I found him. Oh, there he is. There he is. Clam number one of the day. Sweet. Clam one. Yes. Okay, the water is scary. Water is hot lava. Okay. And what we're doing, we're stomping to try to scare these things back into their holes and uh, allow us to be able to see them from them digging down. So a lot of times you'll be walking around thinking you can't find them and uh, you're just walking past them before you can actually see them. So, oh, here it comes, here it comes, oh my God, oh my God. Ah! Oh, it's a big old dungy, big old dungeness crab. Where's your clam friends? Tell us where they're at. Where's your clam brand? Oh, it's a female. We can't take it. Cute little guy, though. Look at him. Little clam friend. Friend of the clams is a friend of mine. Okay, where the heck is these clams now? Time to find some clam. All right, so what I'm experiencing right now is a little bit of storm swell activity. What that means is you guys can kind of see, you probably can't really see, but you can see how the water keeps running in really quickly. I have to keep running away from where I'm digging my clams. A lot of that's coming from the storm that's going on out here. You guys have seen the rain today, storming down here at the coast. And it's, uh, I just talked to the fish and wildlife guy that came over to the truck to check our clams. And he said that there was about an 11 foot swell on the gauge. So that's a big, big swell. It's making the waves go really far up on the beach. So. Oh, run! Perfect timing. Oh, it's a hog. Throw him in there. Run, run. Oh, that's two, everybody. That's two. All right, he had friends too. We're gonna stay in this zone. We're gonna stay in this zone. Woo! Okay. Woo! Woo Double clam. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. There he is. Oh, good one too. Hell's yeah, hell's bells. Another big one. A little late night crab action. Look at this, they're getting it on. Oh, doing the crab, doing the crab walk, everybody. Sweet. <laughs> cool. Well, we're slowly getting them. Got probably five or six now. 
nothing crazy but beautiful beautiful weather out here it's probably it's the, my truck said 60 degrees it's gorgeous it's gorgeous enough for the crabs to be rocking hard <laughs> so just keep trying we still need a few more for our meal okay we're covered in sand we got a half baggie full of clams one limit that's 15. we're leaving a limit behind but getting tie tied 10 o'clock it's been a long day long wet day if you will but one thing we had to do with all these clams that we've gotten so far is my amazing recipe comes tomorrow we're not doing it tonight we're gonna go hungry tonight but we have to let these clams purge which means they get all that sand all the algae and everything that they've been eating on out of themselves they purge it out into the water that you have them set in so we're gonna put these bad boys in with the, the steamer clams make the long journey to where we're staying tonight and then wake up early go and have some fun we've got a pretty cool day planned for tomorrow too and a really good meal so let's load up do the long drive get some rest okay then good cup of joe 2.0 not bad for hotel coffee so we did we stayed in a hotel last night we didn't camp it was raining way too hard i wasn't sleeping on top of the truck we're gonna need to get an rv or or something else a little more constructive for camping in the rain we go into this winter time but this winter time we have some pretty big plans this week i'm gonna buy my plane ticket to chile so you guys are gonna be seeing a bunch of chile videos again probably gonna film a couple of movies um a lot of like survival type of stuff down there it's gonna be really awesome for you guys so i can't wait to share that with you but we still have one more goal our clams are purged let's look at them oh yeah they're looking good but anyways <clears throat> off on another adventure we got one more stop to make today i'm gonna try to catch salmon to put in this very delicious meal we're gonna make but then we're gonna do bank side a little cook action so we got the steamers i put the clam the other clams in the big box there it looks like they're already dead because i obviously do not know how to take care of razor clams you're supposed to put them in salt water i put them in fresh water jordan's a dummy but anyways we're off off on the next adventure let's go do it jordan's other forgotten item of the week was uh fishing gear i brought the rod didn't bring the tackle but luckily we got enough stuff just here in the truck to make it work i got a wicked lure on my rod already um so we're halfway there but we're gonna go check this river out see what our fishing opportunity is and then uh after we see what's going on here i'm gonna make you guys wait to watch me fish and get the, the cook started because this is the cook that's gonna take a while whoa i bet that was a cool ride um this is the cook that's gonna take a while so i'm gonna need to get it all prepped get it all cooking and then we'll go fishing some more. So let's go check this out. All right, so we got the one wicked lure and we got a rod. That's all we got. Let's go fishing. Okay, found a hole. Let's see if there's anything in it. There we go. Oh yeah. Ooh, that's a good, that hole feels good. What a beautiful morning. Creator's blessed us with today. Beautiful river, beautiful lady, beautiful hole. Love it. We're fishing right above a fish trap. I'm sure they're just stacked in here. Okay, we've decided to go do something else. Time to go get the cook started. I'm going to change holes. Um, there's actually a fish trap in the river just below here so don't think there's going to be any fish swimming through but it's for science in the name of science everybody but we're going to switch spots we're going to get our recipe going because it's going to have to we're making a chowder everybody one of the best chattas you ever done seen but we need to get our pot going we need to get all our ingredients in there we need to get it simmering and it's got to cook for probably about an hour so that'll give us some time to fish though so let's go cooking and we'll go fishing what a glorious spot we got the the pigeons are flying the doves are flying the leaves are changing. It is officially fall, everybody. Heck yeah. Okay, it's time to get to work here. We got a lot of stuff to do, a lot of prepping to do, but it's gonna turn out good. Let's bust out all the stuff, get to cooking. That's always a good sign. You see us out here, anybody who wants to sponsor us, we're rocking with some containers here that uh, aren't exactly holding their own. Hopefully our, our seasonings aren't messed up too much. Got the hippie cowboy. She's alive, we're good. Every, all things are good still.
these things are beautiful. I've been bouncing around the road, you know, kind of shaving off all the dirt, getting it all out, out of all the cracks and crevices. They're looking pretty clean. A clean clam is a good thing. Right. I'm gonna set this bad boy up. This thing's pretty sweet. Got a little cable coming off the end of it. Nice. Got my storage. Got my mushies in there. The chickens. I want it pretty meaty. I want a meaty chowder. What's life without a meaty chowder? But I'm not, it's not gonna be huge, huge, so it should be enough. I got some for tonight at home. I'm gonna open these bad boys up. I got some rockfish that we caught in a previous episode. I got some salmon we caught in a previous episode. So everything is hand forged, hand picked, hand loved. We got our big mushrooms. Look at that. What a killer freaking thing. Uh, stole some corn from a farmer's pasture. Just kidding, that's illegal. Don't do that. Uh, and we dug some carrots. So there we go. We got all our ingredients. We're about ready to go. Brooks down getting some water from the river. We're gonna get our clams opened up and cleaned. Uh, and then everything starts going in the pot. Okay, clams are open. Water's boiling. We have to blanch the razors. So we're gonna take the razors, put them in here. They'll open up the rest of the way. You're not supposed to put your razors in fresh water. They die but I think they're still safe to eat. Some of you out there might be saying, no, 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 but I've had them die like this before. Uh, they were on ice all night last night anyways. There's ice in there with them, but they don't like the fresh water. That'll kill them. Uh, so make sure to put salt water in your bucket after you're done clamming. So I'm gonna just de-shell all this. I might actually use some of this salty water uh, for my stop. Granted, again, I've, I've refreshed the water quite a few times on these clams and they got a lot of that, a lot of the seasoning is gonna come from that, that saltiness coming out of these things. All right, so now the trick is dump them in. They are pretty much already opened up. Just but what it does is it makes that clam peel apart from the shell. Let me just do a couple at a time here. That way they kind of clean off a little bit, cook a little bit. Come out. Some weird looking food, isn't it? Weird looking little alien things. Alien creatures of the sand. Okay, so now time to clean. These are pretty easy. Just kind of rip off all the good stuff. Ooh, that's not good stuff. Squeeze out all the bad stuff. Slice up the boot. Make sure she's clean. Same thing, rinse and repeat. Now we got most of them cleaned. Good little team effort going. And then chop them up into nice little pieces. And not even little pieces, pretty big pieces. Nice meaty pieces. So that you get a nice chunk of clam every bite you take. Yummy. Well, the clams are something I'm gonna let fully cook in the, the broth itself. I'm not gonna, I didn't overcook those clams. I'm gonna keep that broth. These ones I'm not even gonna broth. Um, I'm just doing this to keep them clean. Then we're gonna start cutting up our other ingredients. What I'm gonna saute together is the corn, the mushrooms, maybe some of the celery, the garlic, all the other goodies that's gonna go inside of this is gonna get sauteed. All the fish is gonna get made with the broth. We want those fats to go into the, the broth itself. So, next step, here we go. We let the chopping begin. Get the flies out of here, get out of here, flies. Okay, I'm gonna leave the mushies, pretty big chunks. But I do wanna kinda saute these first, that's key, is kinda cook these before we put them into the whole broth status. Okay, and I'm really just gonna use the stumps of these for unspecified reasons. Ooh, that's beautiful though still. Very tender, very nice, very shroomy. Very, very shroomy. Yeah, those almost look like potatoes in a way. We all like Clean clams and knee stumps. That's what this episode's all about. Cornell. I'm gonna go about half an onion. But I'm gonna do big chunkers. 
I want a big chunk of onion here. I'll go one this way. Cowboy. Bam. On the griddle we go. Got a little golden Yukon. Got some baby Kurtz. Very colorful baby Kurtz. This is gonna be fun. I really wanted to use sweet potatoes for this. Um, any kind of potato, in my opinion, is a really good choice to put into a chowder. If you want to make it look a little more festive or even taste a little different, um, putting sweet potatoes or yams or something like that in there can be really good. I like to use my veggies, the real veggies, in big chunks here so that I only have to scoop up a couple of them into my bowl and then I can kind of just eat off of those as, uh, as I go through eating my bowl of chowder. Look at how festive, oh my goodness. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna put all of our clams because we're actually making more clams because we've already eaten almost all of our clams. <laughs> but we're keeping that broth. We're gonna keep that broth. These steamers are absolutely unbelievable flavored. Mm, but we're keeping that broth. So on the other burner goes our broth. I'm just I like to use a, a vegetable in this case, but I'm using chicken because it's all the store have. This is pretty much the only we could have made a fish broth. We kind of have out of the clams, but I'm just gonna make it quick and easy. That way I can kind of show you guys a good example of how this is done. I'm gonna a part and a half of that starting to look pretty good. I just want all those flavors to kind of get mixed together before I add everything in. This is going to be my gauge for when it's done. So when the potatoes and the, and the carrots are done, I'm going to put the mushrooms in right about the exact same time I put these in because I don't want these to get chewy. This will go in as well, just in the broth. That smells so delicious. So delicious. A lot of good things happening right now, everybody. Let's slide this one over. We're going to add this in. This can go in right away. I want all that flavor, all them flavors. Oh God, yes. mm. You wouldn't believe how good that is. In goes my majors and carrots. And like I said, we're gonna add the rest of the broth that comes out of this. Let's add some of our uh, brine. A little bit of brine, yeah. Never hurt. Oh, that's meaty. That's chunk. Chunky. Oh, we got so many clams that are about to go in there too. This is gonna be a three-day soup. Three-day soup. We're gonna be paying for this three days from now. Can't forget the Irish cream pata. That's a chunk. Okay, well it's happening again. We're eating all the beer clams. Now that is a great way to open up clams. I've always used wine, but the beer is next level. I'd like to try it with like an Alaskan amber or something of the sort. But I decided we're not going to add any of the rockfish or the smoked salmon. We have way too much meat. This is a home foraged meal. Only a couple things here we had to use from outside source, but I wanted to make a good recipe. So we're making gourmet out of free. That's the way I like it. We're getting up to temperature. We're starting to get a little foam here from the butter. I'm going to add in all my clamage. This clamage is still coming, but this is this is appetizer. We waited a long time for this meal. Saved ourselves for 48 hours for this. Fasting, they call it. I call it looking for food. Also goes in the heavy whip. That should be about enough. Give it a good mix. Ooh, I like that color. That is a good color. Let's add a lot of bit of black pepper. Quite a bit. That should do it. There it is. Yeah, cover and simmer. All right, well, the pot is set. So we'll just add our thickening. I'm gonna add our thickening real quick, and then it's time to go to catch the fish. Got a good feeling about this. I haven't heard any splashing or rolling or anything behind us, but you did? No way. 
Get out of here. Get right out of town. Right you heard right a splash? There. Uh huh. Where? In the river. Oh God, it's on. But anyways, my secret thickening. We're using instant potatoes. Who to thunk? So nope, not so secret. I'm just gonna ruin all the secrets in the world for fishing and for cooking. That's how we're thickening this bad boy up. Works really, really good. Look at that, it's already happening. Oh God, the smell right now, you guys, you don't even wanna know. Okay, can it happen? Can we pull off the perfect weekend other than not getting chanterelles? But who am I to be so negative? We got all kinds of cool stuff to begin with. Let's see. Oh, I just hit something. Something just whacked me. Something whacked me. Oh, big old, big old Chinook right here. Big old Chinook swimming right there. He's dead though. He's old and dead. Interesting. Big old dead Chinook. Oh, I just got hammered. Okay, do another cast. What the heck? That was fishy. Maybe I'll get him this time. Kind of feels like a small fish. Maybe it's a trout. I don't know, but what the heck? Wow, here he is again, coming right by us. Can I catch him by hand? I don't know if I want to. It's kind of gross. I got him. Whatever it is, I got him. Oh, leaf. Wouldn't believe the fishing this afternoon. Wouldn't believe it. Get it. Time has come. The color of the the soup matches the color of the trees. That's how you can tell it's done, right, babe? Mm -hmm. Right. Or I just can't take it anymore, and I need to eat this thing. Looks amazing. Color is great. The best out of pieces is clam a sourdough. Give her a little dipping. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. The sauce is great. Let's get a couple of ingredients. Look at it all. Okay, we got some bleat. Let's find us a little bit of clam. There we go. Bleat, clam, tater, bleat. Let's see what we got. That is outrageous. The flavor's that good. I've hardly seen on this earth. It, it literally, it looks exactly like it tastes. Delicious. Lots of cool ingredients in this one too. Look at the bleat, such an interesting texture. Very mushroomy mushroom, the bleats are. Mmm. Great flavor too, it matches very well with the seafood. Okay, here's a little chicken in the woods. Mmm. Very chickeny. Mmm. That's ridiculous. I wonder if we can eat all this. Damn sure gonna try. Well, home sweet home. We made it through yet another gourmet adventure. And I hope you guys had a lot of fun on this adventure like I did. That's the beauty of going out into Mother Nature to harvest a meal is you can be so diverse. We went out to find specific things for our meal today. We found most of them, but also we pivoted and found some things some new things that we've never eaten before and it turned out to be absolutely delicious. So so be sure to try this chowder, you guys, even if you have to go out and purchase the, the ingredients, it was absolutely delicious. But if you can go dig them yourself, do that. It's even more fun. So until next time, everybody, you know where to find us. You all stay fishy. We'll see you out there. <laughs>